overboard! Man overboard! Yeah, ease the sails. Millsy the spotting! Sails. Yeah, good one, Millsy. Keep, keep a pointer on it. It happens quickly, unexpectedly, and often in adverse sea conditions. Deploy the uh, life ring. Six o'clock, 80 metres. The risk of falling overboard is real. It's what happens next that's the key to survival. There are step-by-step -step procedures written for man overboard situations. A list of steps such as throwing a life buoy, hitting a button on the GPS and making a mayday call on the radio. However, these steps don't consider that all boats are different and are crewed in different configurations. Therefore, all man overboard situations will be different. We have two procedures uh, which we have on a um, little leaflet here. One is for upwind sailing and one is downwind sailing. Uh, this is a sailing vessel, so 90 to 99% of the time we're sailing, so there's a different procedure than a motorboat. With being two up, the person has to be capable of um, depowering the boat to an extent where you can turn around in either direction and use your motor. Um, and that can be quite complicated if we're running fairly big headsails or spinnakers. So whether you're a weekend warrior or spend years exploring the most remote oceans in the world, it pays to have a plan. John Serity and his wife spend months at sea, just the two of them. I think most boats are different. Uh, a racing boat has a crew of 10 or 12, so they have a different procedure to what we would undertake. Um, we do have a life sling, for example, once we have identified and can circle the person in the water. Um, other than that, just throw anything you can over the side at the time. Obviously, the best plan is to avoid a man overboard situation in the first place. Obviously, if anyone goes forward and we're offshore, we always have a harness line on of some sort. Um, we do do things probably slightly different than the average, but um, we always make sure we have double harness lines clipping onto something uh, along the, the side of the boat. But if it does happen, it pays to be up to speed with your boat's procedure. A recent day on the Derwent, the perfect place to practice for the crew of Masquerade. The set of guidelines are there in black and white, listed out what to do. The issue is every boat is different, so it's a good idea to practice your own man overboard procedures. Whoa, man overboard! Man overboard! Yeah, ease the sails. Six o'clock, 80 metres. First thing that needs to happen is for the crew and the skipper to communicate clearly. When we get around the tack, I want to fill the head tool. Around we go, tacking. 10 o'clock, about 70 metres. Okay. So you can see in this scenario, one of the key considerations is to have someone who keeps their eye on the person who is in the water at all times. And that way you don't lose contact with your man overboard. It's really fundamental, as soon as somebody goes over, that we have a pointer as one, a member of the crew. Somebody immediately points to where the person is in the water. I mean, this is alongside the same time when we deploy life rings and things like that. But, no, that pointer is highly critical to keep the fix on where that person is in the water. And he's informing the skipper all the time, so the skipper knows where to return to. With eyes on the person in the water at all times, the crew go about their roles to slow the boat, turn the boat and get back as quickly as possible. We can go down, downwind of the person in the water, come back up on the wind and um, we can basically feather the mainsail and control the speed, get it down to a crawl. Um, so yeah, that is quite different to a power boat. We got him! Okay, heading up to slow her down. The 12-step man overboard procedure set out by the Yachting Australia Safety and Sea Survival Course is as follows. Firstly, shout man overboard, mark your position on the GPS, throw a life buoy or even a flare at the person in the water. It's important to have a crew member act as a spotter at all times, never losing sight on the man overboard. The skipper will ask for the jib to be lowered or furled and the engine started. Then approach the person in the water upwind with the engine in neutral and the person out as quickly as possible. This is, brings out the importance of why you've got to practice this procedure with your own boat, because every boat's a little bit different. And when we've done the man overboard previously, we've, we've tried recovery in a certain method and found it just doesn't suit this boat. This boat's a light to medium displacement and it can tend to take off fairly quickly as soon as you bear away as opposed to a sort of heavier traditional style of boat which has got a, a lower terminal speed if you like. Um, 
So we, we've adapted the recovery to suit this boat. In a powerboat, the procedure is much the same, although not having to slow the boat using sails makes it a much quicker process. Just remember to keep an eye on the person at all times. Approach from upwind with the engine in neutral and the propeller stopped. To find out more about the Yachting Australia Safety and Sea Survival Course, visit sailing.org.au.